everyone. Welcome to the Self Agency Advocate Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda, and this is a space where we explore, discover, and share tools, techniques, and wisdom to help you build and maintain a sense of agency. All right. Super, super excited about this conversation today. We were just trying to figure out when it was that we actually sparked this connection, this friendship. And I had totally forgot because I just kind of thought we had just been friends forever and that was it. (laughs) End of story. Here we are. (laughs) But Carlene actually reminded me that it was over an Alan Watts quote and that's the most perfect way to bloom any friendship ever. And I think that's how you know it's going to last when you can bond over quotes like that and connect in those kind of ways because it was actually a goal setting workshop that we had met at that I was co-facilitating and I think again that just shows what like-minded creatures we are and it's been such a wonderful friendship since that point and it's one of the main reasons that I wanted to spark this conversation with you because all of the conversations we have are so empowering and authentically beautiful because you bring your whole heart and soul to everything that you do as well as every connection that you cultivate so I'm so excited about this conversation today thank you so much for joining me Charlene thank you I'm trying to bring tears to my eyes right now <laughs> that's how much I love you oh, I love you too <laughs> yeah and because with that that's I think the perfect place to start is I just know from all of the conversations and connections we've had over the time, a lot of it has always come down to this essence of truth. Anytime Uh that either one of us had something that we were grappling with or something that we were trying to work through, it always came down to, okay, what is truest for me? Uh What do I need? What aligns? And obviously, that's one of the biggest reasons that we've connected so deeply. Mm. So when you think of that side of things and that that truth, that whatever it looks like, what is it that comes to mind over time? How did you develop that deep understanding that no matter what it is you're trying to decide, no matter what it is you're trying to do, the next step you're trying to take, when did you realize that you had to align? It had to be the truest thing for you, not for others, but for you? Mm, That's a good question. I've kind of, not always, but I used to have a a rule uh, whenever I was trying to make a tough decision that I would rather regret something that I have done than something that I haven't done. Mm. So invariably, I often would just end up doing whatever the change was. And I'm the kind of person that that loves change. I I thrive on change, you know. Um, I see it as a opportunity for growth and learning and which is the complete opposite to what the rest of my family are like Hmm. it's quite funny hence my current gypsy lifestyle yeah more recently and I couldn't put my finger on when exactly it started I think I just started tuning in more to just the intuition and the the feeling of something and Hmm. how it felt for me and you know I'm trying to try and kind of imagine whatever it was and, and, and feel into it and see how it felt. And if it felt good and right, then I'd be like, okay, well, that's the right thing to do. But if it kind of felt a bit yucky and the word should uh, comes to mind, and that is mm. something that I learned r- around the time that I uh, met you actually uh, through a, a mutual friend of ours. And she would say, you know, don't shit on yourself. And so yeah. I try not to use that word anymore. And if I'm at the point where I'm going, well, I should really do that, then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing it for the right reasons. Mm. You know, should is different to need. Could, yeah. and could empowers you. Could is like, I've, I've chosen either to do it or to not do it. But should is kind of, you're kind of putting mm. this pressure or obligation on yourself to do something that might not necessarily align with your truth but it's something that you feel like you should be doing because society says so or your parents expect it or you know your partner expects it or whatever Mm. Mm. it's almost like you're trying to justify it when you're saying the word should like when I hear the word should it sounds like a justification like I should do this because xyz yeah and very rarely is it I should do this because my heart is 
telling me to. Totally. A lot of the time I hear it in that other context. Yes. So I really, yeah, I really resonate with that, the should versus the could. It is, there's such a different connotation and understanding between those mm. two words. Yeah. So one thing I'm curious about, for myself, I have always kind of thought that like I really love change as well and I love doing this and going here and doing that and letting things unfold and letting them happen. I have since discovered that that is not the case. <laughs> I <laughs> I really love routine and I really love rooting and getting into things and getting to that place of like creation from my type of like solitude and that rooted space so I've really found that routine and rhythm and flow is very important for me and the reason that I know that now is because my whole life I've said yeah I love change I love adventure and going to do things but what I was actually doing was distracting myself and running away from things that I didn't want to face like I was very much okay well I'll go and do this and just totally ignored everything that was going on in the background like I wouldn't even acknowledge it I was like no I'm doing this for my heart this feels good and now when I look back I'm like girl you were running (laughs) please do you ever find that or is change like just so second nature to you that you're running towards something rather than away from something? I totally hear what you're saying with uh, the the distraction thing because I think I definitely, and it's funny because you're saying that, I realized that I hadn't really questioned that that belief in a while, the, the me loving change thing. And so now, mm. now I'm thinking about it going, hmm, do I? Because oh, I hadn't questioned it, I was like, "Yeah, that's just that's just I, that's what I what I'm into." And I, but I do know that in the past it was definitely a distraction. Like I was one of those people that would just cram stuff into my whole entire day. You know, like every minute was filled up with something. Um, you know, I've never been a TV watcher or anything like that because mm. I saw that as it was wasting my life. I had to do other stuff. You know, I had to cram stuff in. And, you know, like I'd, yeah. I'd, work, I'd work a Monday to Friday job. And if I got to Friday and I didn't have plans for the weekend, I would literally freak out. I, was like, oh, I need to plan something. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to waste my life if I haven't got any plans for the weekend. But now I look back at it and go, okay, that was just mm-hmm. me not feeling comfortable with just sitting with myself and listening to myself mm-hmm. and, you know, facing facing the shadows and, you know, facing the uncomfortable feelings and those things, which I think is is another one of those things. I did a blog on this recently that is really rife in society. People, anything that's uncomfortable or hurts, uh, we avoid at all costs, mm. which isn't actually healthy, you know, so it, all this stuff is getting bottled up and shoved under the carpet and pushed into the shadows when it actually needs to be addressed and processed and and moved through you so that you can transcend it and move on to the Mm. you know the next level so I recognize that now but I do also I do like change like I've chosen this lifestyle Mm -hmm. and but within it there is still kind of routines within that like I still have my morning you know meditation and yoga practice and there's certain things that you know Mm. I, I still need to do try and do every day sometimes my lifestyle makes it a bit difficult but um yeah yeah and I think I think a lot of for me anyway a lot of it comes back to if you're really grounded within yourself then the change is kind of okay yeah yeah Mm. Uh, yeah. within that within you answering it it shows the time that you've put into getting curious and exploring that side of things and getting to know yourself to be okay in the discomfort and the silence and getting to a place where you actually enjoy your own company and Mm. being with yourself and I think that's such a potent place to be like when we cultivate and develop that sense of connectedness and relationship with ourselves yeah that's when everything starts to shift because I've noticed a big change because I was very much similar in a lot of ways 
where I loved having plans and I loved having stuff to do and I kept myself so busy. I was Mm. on all of the time. And then when I started to slow down and started to change my pace and sit and meditate and be with myself in the first little bit, it was so uncomfortable. All of your demons, all of your shadows, your darkness, it all starts to come up and you sit with it and you acknowledge it and you come to a place of loving it and accepting it as part of you. And now, girl, like I love being on my own. <laughs> I love hanging out with myself. Totes, I hear you. Yeah, same. Yeah. Like I I love being in silence with myself. I love simply reading a book or drinking a cup of tea and watching the trees or the birds or whatever it looks like. Like I really love being on my own. And that can be really confronting for other people from what I've noticed. Right now, I I just, I take my own time. I do the things that I need to do in the moment. And then so many people will say like, hey, is everything okay? Like, are you are you good? What's going on? Haven't seen you in a while. And it makes them really uncomfortable that I'm like, no, I just, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, like I'm just hanging out. I'm doing my thing. And they're like, oh, well, like, do you want to do something? And I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> I'm okay. But it makes them really uncomfortable. And they say, like, I could never do that. I could never just sit with myself. I could never feel silence and feel stillness. So was there a certain practice that it looked like for you along your journey when you did start to unravel those layers and start to discover the silence and discover that space within listening to you talking it, it made me realize that the, the the real I guess change behind it for me was uh, the realization that I didn't have any self-love and that is why I didn't want to be with myself because I didn't I didn't mm. like myself so why would I hang out with someone that I didn't like so yeah. And that was massive. I know we've had mm. conversations about it before. And that's one of the biggest drums that I'm I'm yeah. beating at the moment is that it's just such a key thing is self love. And I was really embarrassed about it when I first addressed it and acknowledged it. I was like, Oh my god, I'm this person that doesn't love themselves. How can that how can that happen? And then I started talking to people about it and realized that, you know, everyone has either gone through it or is going through it in some way, shape or form. And now I talk about it with almost everybody I know. And like if something comes up, I'm like, I'm like, do you love yourself? And I even talk about it with my with my non conscious, the hmm. spiritual friends, you know, like my friends that have, you know, office jobs in the city and are having a really hard time and I ask them that question and it's amazing how, how honest and open they are in response and almost guarantee actually I can guarantee that hundred percent of the time the people that I've asked that question to have said have said no, not really. And it just has so much effect on everything like it obviously affects your relationship with yourself it affects self-confidence it affects your relationships with other people because if you don't love yourself you can't really truly love anyone else like even to the extent of i think it's part of the problem with the planet now you know like we're intrinsically connected with mother earth and if we don't love ourselves we're not going to love her either so um yeah i think for me that was the biggest the biggest thing was was learning to love myself and then and then after that i was like yeah i love hanging out with me i'm cool Mm -hmm. so in those conversations did anything kind of come from it at the end of the day in terms of them taking action or them making a shift or getting a little more inquisitive about it and being like what is this self-love concept what is that how do I get some did it spark anything often or sometimes people would ask me you know how and I actually did a blog uh, a little while ago about about self-love and in my kind of tips for personal tips for you know how to how to love yourself and um, exercises you can mm. do to to facilitate that and um, so I've been yeah. just casually sending the link to this this blog off to <laughs> everyone I've talked to about. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, check this out. Yeah, <laughs> just sharing the love. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But that's what it comes down to, right? It is. It is about that conversation because within seeing you show such love and respect to yourself, it really does allow and give 
permission for others to at least have the intention. Yeah. Like it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't happen instantly. But if we have the intention of getting to know ourselves and the intention of loving ourselves, mm. that plants a seed and it starts to unfold in that way. And then little pieces start to fall into place in the puzzle. And over time, you do, you start to make different decisions and absolutely get a little more connected. So I think that's really powerful to have those conversations mm. because a lot of people would find that uncomfortable to ask somebody that or talk about it so I think that's massive and I love that you're doing yeah. and having those intimate conversations well, and I feel a lot of people aren't even aren't even aware of it like it's not even something that's even on their radar they just don't even think about it you know you you mm-hmm. are often just looking at the world in external terms not looking at inwards so it's not even something that's even crossed their mind and then when you bring it up they're like oh uh Oh, I guess nah, I kind of hadn't really thought about it. Um, and because we're not taught it, yeah. you know, that you, you talk, talk about loving yeah. others, and and but you, there's no, not in my experience anyway, uh, has there been any teachings from my family or in schools or from anywhere about loving yourself? And if anything, you know, it's kind of like if you kind of said that you know, back in the, in the day or some of the circles I was and you know, it'd be, it'd be seen as being egotistical. It would say, oh, you're kind of, you know, yeah, putting yourself out there. Such a weird concept. Mm, yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be talked about and become more open and, and acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think when we look at this side of we're not taught it and it's not something that is really brought onto our radar, from day one for Mm. a lot of us and some people are raised in that way and that's incredible but for the majority of people I talk to it's not something that comes into their awareness until way way down the track and a lot of the time it's that self-love or Mm self-worth is solely based on external yeah it's based on the house you have the toys you can buy the vacations you take and the people that you surround yourself yeah. with and the people that you buy with your yeah. money. And a lot of the time, like when people are seeking that external or always looking of what can I add, mm. it's like, what hole are you trying to fill? Like what gap in you are you trying to fill by constantly seeking external yeah. material things? Yeah. And it's such a shift when you do come back to that place of when we're so connected with ourselves, we truly do realize that everything I need Mm. is within. Everything that I need is taken care of because we're living in flow and we're living that place of alignment. And then you don't need all of the other shit that goes along with it, really. You're like, well, I've got this. Like, I'm fine. I'm good. And then things start to fall into place and you get the things that you need to survive and to live a fulfilled Mm. life and all of that material stuff is taken care of. You don't have to like put the pressure on yourself because it is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, Mm. you know, it's, it's a, um, it's a societal thing too, you know, like we've grown up and that was, that was a hard, it was a hard cycle for me to break, you know, we've, We've grown up thinking that you are supposed to have that. That's how you win at life. You know, you you get a career and you buy a house and you get married and you have kids and you know you get all of these mm. achievements, whatever they are, and you know, and that's and that's how your worth, as you said, is measured. Mm. And I I grew up thinking that would like it never fit that whole. Set up, it never worked for me, and I, I tried to do it. I tried to fit in the box because I thought that was that was what you had to do, and that was the only only way to exist. And then when I finally listened to my truth, I realised that there was so many other options, and this wasn't the only way to live, and that you didn't have to you know spend however what is it 48 weeks of the year doing this job that you hated just so you could have four weeks you know of mm. bliss on a holiday every year you know it's like it's just yeah. it's just my mind boggles just thinking about it 
I was definitely in the corporate world and I was living that life and I was in it, even though I'm Canadian, it was still the American dream and this and that. And I was so caught up in it. And I would work all year to have like, we only got two weeks paid vacation at the time. And that two weeks vacation, I would typically spend exhausted. I would probably get sick because I had just worked my ass off for the other 50 weeks of the year. And then I enjoy those two weeks. And it's literally just trying to recuperate and recover from being so disaligned and so miserable in the job. And that's when it was one holiday that I spent and I was so, so disappointed because I was just miserable the whole time because I was sick. I was tired. I was everything. And I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep working to enjoy. I need to enjoy. And then work comes on the side because it can't go the other way. And holy moly, that transition was hard. It was really hard because you get used to the paycheck and you get used to the lifestyle that comes with it. And the transition out of it was really uncomfortable. I was like, I'm going to be broke for the rest of my life. This is it. Like, I'm just going to be this person who can't pay bills and can't do this. But we don't see the other side of it. We don't see the, the abundance that is coming. Because when we choose to stop doing something, the mind can only tell you what you're going to miss out on. It can only make sense of what you're losing and what you're letting go of. Because it can't fathom what you're about to step into because you have not experienced it yet. So it's so uncomfortable to make the change. But then when you step into that place of embodied presence and aligned purpose with your day, everything shifts. And then, yeah, money comes in and the holidays still happen. And you find these new connections and these new people that you're like, wow, I never could have imagined this. Thank God I listened. So what's the biggest thing you've noticed? What's the most kind of fulfilling or biggest thing that you're like, wow, not in my wildest dreams could I ever have imagined X, Y, Z. And it's solely because you made the change and listened to yourself. Wow, good question. I mean, I was going to say I'm happy all of the time, but I mean, obviously I have had my ups and downs. I've got experiences that upset me like everybody else, but I know it's not... It's not going to kill me. It's, it's, part, it's all part of the process. It's all part of the journey. So I just, you know, it's, it's, I allow that to happen mm-hmm. and it's fine. But, you know, I, like I love my life and I, I never feel lonely, um, mm. even though I spend a lot of time on my own. And mm. the thing that I'm, I'm loving at the moment, which is a fairly recent thing, is that I've kind of I've really, 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 really stepped into my authentic self, my truth, 100%. And it's... Um, mm. It's so empowering, so empowering. And it's, it's amazing how much, I don't even call it confidence, but just faith that, like even just talking to you now, like I just have complete faith that what I want to say or need to say is going to come out in the way that it needs to come out. And I'm not even worried about if I'm saying the right mm. thing or if I'm going to stumble over my words or anything like that. It's just, it's just there. And it's, it's uh, like I, yeah. I was actually thinking about it a second ago. I was like, man, this is so cool. I love this. <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. It's so fun. <laughs> like, it's so much fun. I really love that you brought that up because this in itself can be such a vulnerable experience because I am asking you deep questions mm. and saying, like, here, give me your candid truth. Give me the good, the bad, the ugly, Mm. like, let's be honest with each other and get into it. And for some, that's like, oh, I need to watch what I say. I need to monitor it. I need to make sure I say it properly Mm. or make myself look good and sound good. But here you say like, nope, here I am. Like, I am showing up. That is so magical because that's, that's how these conversations unfold in the best of ways because... When we don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to say the right thing? Is it going to resonate? Like all of these inner dialogue things that happen when we can just show up and be like, this is my truth. And I know Mm. it's my truth because I am speaking from my center. I am speaking from my, if you want to call it heart, if you want to call it authentic space, whatever, Mm. a million different names, doesn't matter. 
it's that core. It's who you are. And thank you so much for bringing it to the table and sharing that because it's so inspiring and empowering for others to witness. And I think it just allows that even more space to be. And that's what we need more of. We need more space. One of the words I didn't use earlier was uh, how much power is in vulnerability. Like just opening yourself up and being vulnerable mm. with people. Like I, I, I didn't really realize how much I, I kind of, I guess, shielded that from not only others but also myself. And and I've been finding like, I just, I just, I'm constantly just, just in awe that I have connections with people now and even people that I think you know I, I don't necessarily have a lot in common with I've been finding that if I just come from that place of authenticity and mm. and truth and just and, and vulnerability we've just been having the most amazing connections and and it also gives them permission to do the same thing so you just have this these really uh, rewarding uh, connections and conversations with people that I, I've never experienced before it's, it's, and it's amazing it's incredible mm. and it's so positive as well like there's no I've been finding Absolutely. since I've been doing it as well there's no whinging or complaining or bitching about things it's just it's just mm. real yeah yeah because I think we start to realize that we like don't have time for that like I don't have time to sit around no and- hold anger and resentment and hold grudges because I have a whole life to live and I have so many fun things to do and people to connect with that I just won't allow that stuff to take up residence in my mind or in my body because there's just so much more to this life and I want to create that kind of space and have these kind of conversations without this niggling anger, frustration, mm. petty resentment. Well, it just doesn't. It, looks it just like. doesn't serve either. So, yeah. Like I'm never going to serve you or anyone mm. around you, you know. And you, you no. can you can always look at it in a different way. Like I always, if something comes up for me like that, which doesn't happen very often anymore, but if it does, I'm kind of like, okay, well, what what's this triggering in me? You know, what is the lesson here? You know, it's oft, often it's not whatever it is that you're angry at or upset yeah. about it's, it's something else that is within you so mm, yeah and it allows you to come back to that space mm-hmm. of witnessing and understanding that okay this is triggering me and this is having an effect something is a little off right now so let's get into it what does this look like why is this coming up how do I want to handle and approach it in this moment? And it allows us to not react from an emotionally driven place. We can uh-huh. now respond from a mindful and compassionate space. And yeah. that changes yeah. relationship dynamics so massively because you're showing Perfect. up and wanting to understand yeah. the other person and not just yeah. say, you did this and blah, 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 all of that. So yeah, I think that mindful response versus yeah. emotional reaction is such a big one. It's so crucial. So how do you stay true to that in the moments where, so let's say you are facing challenge, you are facing struggle, discomfort, whether it's your boundaries are being crossed or your values are being challenged or whatever it is that's going on. Because in all of this amazingness, in all of like, us sitting here being like yeah life is great everything is landing yeah it's still damn hard things still happen absolutely yeah we still face struggle and adversity and challenge but how do you stay true to that in the sense of staying connected with yourself and being in that mindful space in moments of discomfort uncertainty or challenge yeah so i've i've experienced this just recently well I'm still going through it at the moment uh, where I um, have been in a relationship Mm. or still kind of in a relationship with someone that is very complicated and 
Mm. Um, so because of those complications, lots of stuff was coming up. And even though it's, it's mm. been a roller coaster and there's been a lot of really difficult times and really you know, upsetting times, it's still felt okay because, well, both of us have talked about everything that has arisen as it's arising and doing it from a place of authenticity, truth, mm. vulnerability, um, you know, it's just laying it all out there. And it's just made it so much easier, you know, in a situation that could have just got real ugly real quick. It's mm. just been, even though it's been challenging, it's, yeah. it's actually been really rewarding at the same time because, because of that, that willingness to be open and, and, and honest and uh, vulnerable with how we were feeling and, and uh, what was going on for us you know, even the ugly stuff. It's been, it's been a real eye opener. Yeah. So has it taken more self check-ins and more, I guess, internal conversations with yourself to be like, okay, this is coming up. How is it that I want to respond? Or is it more in that realm of instantaneous vulnerability? Like rather than the pause and the check-in, it's more that instantaneous showing up does that make sense is it one or the other or are you seeing a little bit of both how is this unfolding in your internal landscape there's been times where uh, something's come up and we haven't been able to discuss it straight away so then I, I kind of sit with it and, and journal and try and mm-hmm. work out what it is that's, that's, that's going on for me mm-hmm. and then we'll talk about it whenever the opportunity arises but then there's also been times where you know something will come up when we're together Unlike the past for me, I have, it's not like I've been sitting there planning what it is that I'm going to say. Um, again, it comes back to what I was saying before, where I just have faith that whatever I need to say and that mm-hmm. the way that I'm saying it will come out in the right way when I start talking, uh, which in the past I've really struggled with. Like whenever I've had something to say to mm-hmm. people that I'm in, a, in an intimate relationship with, I spend literally hours ruminating on it and running it over my head and trying to work out the best way to say it and da, 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 da. and there's been none of that at all which is just so so much nicer just you know not having that stress and anxiety at all it's just been yeah. this is this is what's going on so i'm hearing bits of pausing and reflecting mm-hmm. and checking in but also that like unrelenting trust within yourself And I think that unrelenting trust came from this journey of self-discovery and self-connection because you really have to know yourself Mm. to know that you're reliable and to know that you are trustworthy to yourself. Trust Mm -hmm. is built, absolutely, and it can be lost so quickly. So to hear that you have cultivated and developed that sense of trust with yourself is, I think, the underpinning tone or essence of what this really means because when you do get to know yourself and you develop that sense of self-agency and relationship with you and yourself trust is built from there and when you actually wholeheartedly and relentlessly trust yourself you can have these open and vulnerable conversations because you know in that moment it is coming from truth it is coming from your best Mm. intention your highest good all of those things that go along with it so I think that 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 trust piece and trusting ourselves because a lot of the time we put our trust into others and we say you hurt me yeah and it's like well no you just had unrealistic expectations in another human being and really at the end of the day it has to come back to I trust myself, mm. I trust my judgment, I trust myself in yeah. this moment to listen to me and mm. honor the messages I'm receiving. Yeah. So it's really beautiful to hear that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shucks. Thanks. So much wisdom. So much. Alrighty. I just love it. I love it. I do have one more question for you, and this might take us uh-huh. into a completely different realm, or it might stay along the same lines. Just let it come. Let it be so organic in the moment. This is my favorite question because I think this is where I get a little more insight into 
what it is that people are seeking and longing for from that truest place, but it also shows us mm. the power that comes from this connection to self and what we can do on a bigger scale. So when you think of our global community, the global society, whatever it looks like, is there one big change that you would want to make or one big societal norm that you would want to disrupt and shift, or it can be a small baby step. It can be whatever it is along that gradient. Mm. Truest to you, um, what does that shift look like and why? I was going to go with the self-love thing, but the, the other thing that, that popped into my head, uh, which I think is speaking to me more strongly right now, is that community, that sense of community, which I think in our, in our society, anyway, in our Western society, we've lost mm. a lot of the time. It's, it's, it's gone, you know. We've, had, we've put so much emphasis on being independent and, and you mm. know, getting above the next person. And, you know, it's all, it's all about striving to be better than everybody else and being able to do things yourself and, and not having to rely on anybody else. And I think... Mm. I've had a few conversations with people about that about it lately and I mean some of it could come down to, you know, back in the days when, when people were immigrating from places like England and whatever those older societies, you know, people were isolated and they were they didn't have a community to to fall back mm. on. So that that could be what it partially could be on a deeper level, but it just if it if it's affecting so much, like it's affecting I strongly believe that's why, you know, mental health is is so high right now because all, there's so many just isolated people around that just don't feel like they have any support and you know that old saying you know it takes a village to raise a, a, a baby um you know how many mm. people are trying to do that on their own and, and it's just we're mm. we're tribal people we're tribal species we're, we're meant to we're meant to live in groups we're not meant to be isolated and you know there's all these things where we support each other and, and even mm. even when it comes back to you know sustainable living um, that, that word community just keeps coming back to me all the time, you know, things like, you know, having people mm. sharing gardens, you know, crops that they've grown in their gardens and, you know, even sharing material things like washing machines and stuff, you know, we, we don't all need to have individually yeah. own all of this consumer stuff, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous and, you know, and, and we can support each other and, and <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so that coming back to, to community is, um, mm -hmm. I think, is a really, it's, it's a, it has to happen. There's, I don't, in my mind, there's no way forward the way things are going at the moment. Like, it needs to come back to community, come back to sharing, coming back to, you know, lifting mm -hmm. each other up, right, rather than trying to, you know, stomp on top of everybody else to get to yeah. the top of the pile. Yeah. Collectively, we can reach such greater levels than we can as individuals. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. There's so much to be said for community. And I would even go further to say that this whole mentality around being strong, independent individuals, like you hear it so often come from both sides of the coin being strong independent I've got this I can do it on my own all of that but whatever happened to receiving and allowing when I think of myself personally I love to be of service I love to offer a helping hand and show up for people whether it's an ear to listen to what they have going on or it's they need a cup of sugar like whatever it is yes I'm your girl. I got you. And what would it feel like? So when I think about it, I very much growing up as a white female, you do have that mentality, like you want to play with the, the big guys, you know, you want to prove yourself in that whatever messed up paradigm that we came from in that sense. And it was, I'm a strong, independent female. I can do this. If they can do it, I can do it. But that takes away from the other side of the coin. So go with me on this one. So when I see it, when I look at it, so often we want to be of service and we want to help others and we want to be there and nurture and nourish and whatever it is, be of service. 
But as soon as we need something, we're like, no, I can do this on my own. I've got this. Forgetting that there's someone out there who wants to be of service. Forgetting that there's someone out there who actually wants to help you and it would benefit them and they would feel that sense of fulfillment for having helped you. So if we flip that coin and think, okay, if I'm always wanting to be of service and help others, who am I robbing the opportunity from by not allowing and not receiving? If somebody wants to show up and help you from a place of good intention and and love and gratitude and from that place, then who are we to say no? Who are we to take that opportunity and that experience away from them when we know that we would benefit? So coming back to that collective community, it's this cyclical thing. It's this place of ebb and flow and sometimes you receive and sometimes you give. And I think we really need to get better at receiving. And I speak from a personal place. I absolutely can only speak for myself, but if we allow and we receive, Not only do we benefit, but we help others benefit because they want to be of service as well. And it's, it's this beautiful community that you're talking about. So thank you for indulging my tangent. Appreciate it. I had a thought while you were saying that, that, um, cause I, I, I can definitely relate to that. Like I know I've, I've, I've totally been like that in the past when people have offered help. I'll be always like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm good. I don't, I can do this. And it was almost, I'd almost get offended that people were, didn't think I could do it myself. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's become a lot easier yeah. once I realized how powerful being grateful for things was. Like I've got a, I now have a daily gratitude practice and I think that has really helped me to be able to receive because I'm truly grateful now when somebody offers me whatever it is you know some help or Mm. food or whatever you know I'm just like wow that's yeah that's amazing thank you so much for that I'm so grateful exactly yeah and I think that's such a beautiful beautiful place to kind of wrap up and come into that that reminder that place of gratitude and understanding that if we Mm. can look at everything with that lens of being grateful whether it's a positive experience or it's a learning opportunity and a growth opportunity that space of gratitude illuminates so much potential it illuminates so much space to really once again cultivate that understanding and relationship with ourselves because when we realize what it is that we're truly grateful for, we start to perpetuate that and let that unfold and come into more experiences that feed into that because it's mm. that's how we're wired. Our brain is wired to want what feels familiar and what feels best. So if we're continuing mm. the practice of gratitude, neurologically, we're starting to wire it in a way that we're seeking more of those opportunities. So, so many aspects to this, and I thank you so much for your time, Charlene. I really appreciate everything that you brought to the table, your candor, your vulnerability, your open, honest light. I just appreciate it so, so much. It's been so wonderful. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. thank you so much for listening and if there's anything anything at all that you want to explore or you have ideas about and want to get into please please drop me a line you can find us at the self agency advocate on both facebook and instagram and i would absolutely love to chat so let's connect Mm -hmm.